I'm Adrian Schein. I'm a naturalist. I lead the Loch Ness Project, which researches Loch Ness, and I'm the designer of the Loch Ness Exhibition. I was a schoolboy in the 1960s, and the 1960s were a time when almost anything we wanted could be true. And at Loch Ness, uh, one of our most eminent naturalists, Sir Peter Scott, and the Member of Parliament, David James, were producing reports suggesting that there was definitely something swimming about in here, something very large. And I was a young and lazy man. And I wanted, uh, I suppose, very quick fame and fortune, and I thought I could probably solve the problem in a couple of years. Well, that's, that's more than 35 years ago now, because I came to conquer, but the place captured me. The great thing about it is a sense of space. Here we've got nature all around us, we've got our, our deep glens, we've got our, our wonderful mystic lakes, our lochs, and we've got our hills. So we've got all these wonderful, wonderful natural habitats around us, because there aren't too many people here, except of course when our visitors come and we like that. Operation Deep Scan took place in 1987, and it's probably the, well, it is the biggest expedition that we've ever had. Uh, I certainly don't want to lead more, more than one of those a lifetime. And uh, it consisted of a flotilla of vessels, all with echo sounders, uh, which is a sort of an underwater radar. They were all pointing downwards in a huge line. So it's a sonar curtain. And what we were trying to do was to establish whether some of the interesting sonar contacts we'd got previously were actually moving or whether they were pieces of debris in some way tethered to the lock bed like trawling gear that sort of thing gets dumped in the lock sometimes and so we we moved this great fleet um, along the lock back again several days of it and we did actually find that the majority of the contacts we got were fixed but three seemed to move and we still don't know what they are. Now, the fact I don't know what they are doesn't mean, of course, that they are la uh, Jurassic monsters. It might just mean that I don't understand what they are. But uh, a number of expeditions still get these rather enigmatic sonar contacts that we don't fully understand. They seem stronger than the fish we're familiar with, and they lie deeper down in the water column. So that's still one of the things we're sorting out. What creature might be in Loch Ness? Uh, for my own from my own personal point of view, I don't actually start there. I start with what are people seeing? And that is what, what we study now. It's a question of what are people seeing rather than what sort of animal is the Loch Ness Monster? We don't know whether there is one. Uh, people see things that they describe as large animals. I mean, boat wakes contribute a lot. Water birds contribute a certain amount. Boats contribute to certain sightings. Animals, well, of course, the, the, the perennial favorite has to be the Jurassic creatures, the reptiles contemporary with the dinosaurs. The plesiosaur is the, is the main candidate, I suppose. But the water's terribly cold here. Um, I don't think it's Jurassic Park, but it is a lost world because some of the creatures living right down at the bottom are Ice Age relict species. They're happier in Arctic streams, but here they find refuge in the cold water. It's about the temperature of your domestic refrigerator down at the bottom. So after reptiles, what do we have? Well, there are mammals and there are amphibians. Uh, mammals like seals enter the loch, they do, but they're very often recognized as they surface to breathe. They have a high metabolism, they need a lot of food. And we think there is only 20 tons odd of fish in the open waters of Loch Ness, which is not a great deal. Uh, for, a, for a lake of this size. Amphibians like salamanders and newts are uh, unlikely. Certainly nothing of the reported size has ever been reported for amphibians. And equally, uh, anything that's in here now has to have come in after the last 10,000 years, which is when the last ice melted. This was one big glacier once, one big ice cube. And so the, the fish we have in here, the creatures we have in here, are from the sea. And there have never been any saltwater amphibians that we know about. So they're out. So what does that leave us with? It leaves us with something a bit more sensible, perhaps. Uh, it leaves us with fish. Do the fish have anything to contribute? Well, I am guilty of one particular theory. Uh, 
which relies upon the fact that there is a, an animal candidate, there is a, a candidate, which is very reptilian in appearance, which is very large, but very rarely seen in British fresh waters. And it doesn't feed when it comes in. It doesn't feed at all. We're not certain that they come in, but we think they might have come in. Um, so they don't feed, a bit like the salmon. They might come in to spawn. And I'm not going to tell you what it is, because you'll have to come to the exhibition. <laughs>